Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Before we get started with the presentation, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that attendees are welcome and encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A button. You can pose a question to a specific presenter or ask a general question of any and all of the presenters. Also, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And there are two other blocks of sessions today, so if you haven't signed up for those, please feel free to do so at the same registration website as you signed up for this session. And about one week from today, a recording of the session will be available on that same registration website. But without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, which will be Champlain College. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Kingsley and I am one of the admissions counselors here at Champlain College. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, and without further ado, I am going to first talk about where we are located, which is Burlington, Vermont. So a couple things to mention here is, first of all, Burlington is actually the largest city within the state of Vermont. So students definitely get the best of both worlds because they have a lot of those city amenities that you think of from a city bus system that students are able to get free access to with their Champlain ID card, malls, movie theaters, and everything like that. But at the exact same time, if you drive 15 to 20 minutes away from campus, Campus, you also are able to experience that nature and green mountains that you think of when you think of Vermont. On your screen, you can see some of the drive times for some of the bigger cities throughout New England. However, I do also want to mention that the Burlington International Airport is just a few miles away from campus and does offer a range of direct flights throughout the country. So definitely something to keep in mind. Thinking about the education program here at Champlain, we do something called upside down curriculum. And what this means is every single student starts in their major from day one on campus. So if you know exactly what you want to study, perfect hands on experience all four years. You're in that major right away, building the skill sets that you need to go out to get internships and confirming that it's the right fit for you. However, maybe you come to Champlain and you think you know exactly what you want to study, but once you're in there taking those classes, you realize it's not the right program. This means that you can still change your major and graduate within that four year time frame. And we also know that you may not know what you want to study yet, and that is completely okay as well. You can come to Champlain as an undeclared student, and then you would take a sample of classes throughout your first semester or your first year and choose from there. And while we're thinking about different academic programs, I definitely wanna make sure to highlight some of the programs that we have at Champlain College. So we offer 29 different majors across four different schools and divisions. And unfortunately, I'm not able to go in depth on all the different programs that we have, but we do list the entire curriculum for each and every major on our website. So I would highly encourage you to check it out. A few things I want to highlight while we are here is, first of all, we have the Champlain College Game Studio. So if you're interested in anything related to gaming or video games, this is a great opportunity. And we actually have five different majors related to this, including game design, game art, game programming, game production management, and our brand new major of game sound design. We also have a great tech area, including cybersecurity, digital forensics, computer science, and data science. And if you're interested more in the education or human studies side, we have law, social work, and education at the elementary, middle, and secondary levels. And then last or not least, we do have an entire school of business, and that is actually how Champlain got its start back in the 1800s. And we wanna let you know that we know when you are choosing a college to go to, you are also making a huge investment in your future. We wanna let you know that a Champlain degree does pay off. So for the class of 2019, 88% of our students were employed or continuing their education within six months of graduation. But the number that we are extremely proud of is that out of the students who were employed, 100% of them were employed in a field directly related to their major or their career goals. And what this means is they didn't just have a job, but they had a job specifically in the industry that they went to Champlain for. And this really just shows how everything from our upside down curriculum I just mentioned, to having internship opportunities, to our small class sizes of 16 to 17 students, really allows for our students to take that first step upon graduation and find a job relatively quickly once they get that degree. 
thinking about the application process and financial aid, I first want to make sure to mention that we use both the Common App and the Champlain App, and you do not have to pay an application fee for either form that you use. We also are test optional, so you do not need to submit any SAT or ACT test scores. Thinking about financial aid, every single student is automatically considered for merit-based aid when you apply. However, to be considered for need-based aid, we do need to receive your FAFSA information, which goes live on October 1st every single year. And any student who is a current junior looking to apply next year, our application deadline is November 15th for early decision and January 15th for regular decision. So even if you're applying early, you do still have about a month and a half to get that information in once FAFSA opens. We also accept all outside scholarships as well. So if you are looking for anything at your local bank or a key club, you can bring those to Champlain College and we will never change your financial aid package from Champlain if you do bring in outside funding. And last thing I'll say on this is we do have the Champlain College count on it guarantee. So what that means is any Champlain specific scholarships or grants that you receive will remain with you all four years as long as you remain a full-time student. This is not based on GPA and it is awarded on both a need and merit basis. And then lastly, before I turn things over to the next college, I just wanna thank everyone for joining us. We are not currently able to offer any in-person tours, but we would love for you to join us for one of our virtual events, including an open house, a virtual tour or a daily information sessions as well. I will be in the chat throughout the rest of the presentation, or if you have any questions in the future, please feel free to reach out to our office. I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Champlain. Um, our next presenter this evening will be Maine Maritime Academy. Hello, everyone. Just wanted to echo, of course, what uh, was just said, welcome and thank, thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Allaby. Uh, I'm an admissions counselor at Maine Maritime Academy. And uh, similar to you, I'm originally from the Midwest, although Indiana. So let's see if I can get this going. Hold on. Try this once more. Thank you. You may have frozen there. Are you able to still hear me? So I think we may have momentarily lost Maine Maritime Academy. So what we'll do um, while they are logging back on, uh, we will move to our next presenter and then go back to Maine Maritime after. So uh, Cooper Union, are you uh, available to go ahead with your presentation? Yeah, absolutely. Hello, hello. Hi, nice to meet everyone virtually. My name is Amy Westfall, and I am the Director of Admissions of Art and Architecture, Art, excuse me, Art and Architecture at the Cooper Union. Um, if you're not uh, familiar with Cooper, we are a small uh, campus in the East Village of New York City. Oh, did my screen just quit? Uh, we can still see it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not sure what happened. Let me try that again. Um, having some technical issues. Can you see my full full screen? It, or, we can see it, but uh -oh. it says it's loading right now. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. Uh oh, we might be having internet issues here. Um, we can. Uh, we can come back to you, all right, that's, that's not <laughs> a problem. Try. Let me, one more time, I'm just refreshing, sorry. Um, gosh, okay, and the wheel turns, my apologies. It's okay. It, um, yeah, I might be frozen also. Okay. Well, why don't we, we'll come back to you. Um, and so in the background, you can test it to make sure it's working. And um, it looks like uh, Maine Maritime is back with us as well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 
Okay. It's okay. We'll just trade. <laughs> <laughs> we'll trade. We'll trade back. <laughs> well, let's try this again. Maybe we've got that uh that weather that you've got down <laughs> south. Um. Okay. Can everybody see this uh this yes. PowerPoint here? I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the presentation mode. Um. So as I was saying before, uh, thank you for that restart. Um. My name is Elizabeth Allaby. I'm an admissions counselor at Maine Maritime. And similar to you all out there, I'm originally from the Midwest, Indiana. Um, and it's sort of been kind of a personal goal of mine to get more Midwesterners out uh, into the maritime industry and living on the beautiful coast of Maine. So one thing I wanted to mention about Maine Maritime Academy is we are located directly on the coast, about halfway up the coast of Maine. Canada is three hours away. Um, so it feels very international. Uh, and Acadia National Park is about one hour away from our campus. Um, so as I kind of go through this, just keep in mind that maritime theme. Um, so we're a pretty small school, about 950 undergraduates. Um, and we have 23 different degree programs ranging from business to engineering, transportation, and ocean studies. I'll go into that in just a moment. Um, but one thing that sets us apart is we have seven professional licenses embedded within our different degrees, five of which are directly from the US Coast Guard. Um, so whether you're getting that marine engineering degree um, or the different uh, size licenses we offer in the transportation side of things, actually operating, driving different size vessels, um, you're able to get that sort of extra boost in addition to your bachelor's. Uh, we do uh, have, like I said, a small uh, group of undergraduates and due to that we're able to offer very small class sizes. Um, typically your class sizes range from 5 to 15 and they tend to be smaller when you're in those one-on-one -on -one personal lab spaces. Um, as I mentioned before, we have that working waterfront that all of our students have access to, where we have over 60 training, research, pleasure, motor, sail vessels. So even if you've never been on anything like that before, that is what an institution like this is for, to give you those skills, to give you that knowledge set so you can go out into the maritime industry um, and certainly be confident. A uh, couple other things I wanted to mention about our academics. So as as I said, we, we fall under that maritime umbrella. So with the engineering that we offer, most of our students are becoming uh, what are called marine engineers, and they're getting what's called the unlimited tonnage license from the Coast Guard that allows our students to work aboard uh, any size vessels all over the world, or they're going into the power sector. Um, increasingly more popular green energies like wind and hydroelectric power. The transportation side is sort of how it sounds. Uh, learning how to operate, um, navigate any size vessel from the largest that we have. Our training ship, if you saw that in that opening picture, it's about 500 feet in length. The largest vessels in the world are triple that, all the way down to much smaller tugboats, maybe um, wooden schooners, things like that. And everything in between to ferries, supply vessels, things like that. The international business and logistics, that management piece that we offer, um, probably it doesn't sound like it has a whole lot to do with that maritime industry, but uh, that's where you're dealing a whole lot with those imports, exports, um, which tend to take place aboard vessels. And the, the last uh, branch of our academics is ocean studies. So learning how to do um, all of that great oceanographic research and getting that Coast Guard license to operate the research vessel to go to the place where you want to research or gather your specimens is a pretty stellar way to earn that degree. Uh, we're an extremely hands-on school. Doesn't matter what major you're in, you're going to have quite a bit of time um, doing what you've just learned in your lecture halls. So we want to make sure by the time you graduate, all those skills that you have learned are muscle memory and you have a lot of good exposure to those different pieces. One thing that definitely sets us apart would be our uniformed student body, the Regiment of Midshipmen. So for those unlimited tonnage licenses that I mentioned, for those marine transportation majors, marine engineering majors, it is a requirement from the US Coast Guard uh, to be in what is called this uniform student body. So our students are not joining the military when they graduate unless they'd like to. We've got that Naval ROTC option, a way to go into the Navy Reserves and the Marine Corps. Um, but the majority of our students, though they're in uniform, we're called an academy, um, when they graduate, they become what are called commercial mariners. And this is only a requirement for about 65% of our student body. For everybody else, 
totally voluntary. Um, and some students certainly do enjoy the structure and they like the additional leadership opportunities that this affords. Another thing I wanted to mention is we keep you busy. So outside of your academics, uh, your summers are jam packed either with training cruises aboard our 500 foot long training ship. Um, typically these cruises go across the Atlantic and they go to different foreign ports all over Europe. Maybe you'll have co-ops or internships or cadet shipping variations on a theme in which you're working out in the professional industry, making those contacts, building up that resume. And this is very much a reason why um, over 90% of our students are employed in their fields within 90 days of graduation. Our career services department is very dedicated to making sure uh, that you're connected to these summer experiences that very much pave the way to what you do when you graduate. I'm going to sort of zip through the next couple of slides um, just so that way I stay within my time. But thank you very much for your patience. And if you've got any other questions about Maine Maritime Academy, I'll drop my uh, email information in the chat, but feel free to reach out. Have a great one. Say hi to the Midwest for me. Thank you very much, Maine Maritime. Um, Cooper Union, are, yes. are you okay with your presentation? Yes, it's yep. worked out again. Great. So. Up next is Cooper Union. Thank you. Okay, you can see my screen this time, I hope. Yes. Um, hi, <laughs> my name is Amy Westfall, um, and I'm the Director of Admissions uh, for Art and Architecture at the Cooper Union. We're very happy to be here today. Um, just a small uh, little uh, point of view of where we're located, and we're in the heart of New York City in the very vibrant uh, East Village. We're very small, private, specialized college. As you can see, we are comprised of like three academic buildings. Um, we were founded in 1859 by Peter Cooper, who was this brilliant uh, philanthropist, inventor, um, sort of an interesting individual um, himself. He was not a well-educated man and he actually didn't learn how to read or write until he was much older. Um, for that reason, when he did become successful, he decided to found this institution. Um, that was about a rigorous humanities, as well as academic programs for art, architecture, uh, and engineering. Um, we uh, are open to all race, religion, sex, uh, and social status. Um, we're very, very small, as I said. Um, it's very dynamic, therefore. Um, our student to faculty ratio is about eight to one. And typically our class sizes um, are, are very uh, small. At the maximum, it would be 30, um, but typically I would say it's more around 15 to 17. Um, we have a really uh, collaborative, committed environment. Um, we have over 13,000 alumni uh, working out uh, in the world, which helps us with uh, pr prospective uh, mentorship opportunities, career opportunities. Um, and we're very engaged within the New York City uh, East Village community. Um, our, in the School of uh, Engineering, we have approximately uh, five majors. We have chemical, civil, electrical, mechanical, and a general engineering program. This is a very project-based interdisciplinary uh, coursework. Uh, we have a lot of research opportunities. And then we also have an integrated four-year bachelor's and master's program if you'd like to continue your studies. Um, the Erwin S. Channon School of Architecture is a five-year professional um, Bachelor of Architecture degree. We are NAAB accredited. This is a very, very small uh, program. We only admit about 25 to 30 students per class. Um, and there's about three faculty uh, per design studio. And as you can see, this is actually the studio where all that magic happens. It's sort of, again, sort of a very collaborative environment institution. So this is where everybody uh, works together. We also have a um, School of Art, which we, and we offer a BFA. Uh, it, it's an integrated program. We say we don't to, uh, select majors. Um, we feel like this gives students more flexibility um, to take courses that they're interested in. Um, we admit around 65 freshmen a year, also a very small program, um, and around five to 10 transfers, depending on the year. Very small class sizes, again, lots of individualized attention. We focus on critical thinking, rigorous humanities. We believe that a good artist is a well-rounded artist, an artist who can do many things. We have studio spaces for all of our students. 
um, after the foundation year. And being that it's New York, we have this incredible um, repertoire of artists in New York City who come and teach uh, and many distinguished artists that are on our faculty as well. We have um, a very strong uh, humanities, social sciences uh, program. Um, we have a center for writing, um, which is very popular among our students. And then we do offer a few minors as well in the humanities, computer science and mathematics. Um, we do have also a lot of interdisciplinary electives which kind of help bring the three different schools together um, in, in the elective courses, which is very um, interesting and fun. We have one residence hall. Um, it's really just about big enough uh, to house our freshman class. Um, we also have peer mentorship, internships, a study abroad program. We've got lots of clubs. And of course, again, the East Village has so much to offer in terms of art and culture as well. We offer career counseling. We have a graduate school counseling. We have an alumni student mentorship program. Um, lots of things related to you know, life after Cooper. We are on the Common App as well for first year. For transfers, we have a special uh, in-house app. We are also SAT, ACT optional for 2021 and 22. Um, we do look for transcripts, letters of recommendation. We believe in sort of assessing the student in sort of a holistic fashion and our faculty are on the admissions committee and they work to construct a class and actually um, you know, select the individuals they think that would work well together. Um, we are automatically a half tuition scholarship. If you're admitted, you receive a half tuition scholarship at valued at 22,275. Um, this is guaranteed for all four years or five years if you're in architecture. We also do award merit-based aid as well um, there's nothing students need to do for this. This is at our discretion. Um, we also have need-based aid and work-study opportunities. Um, I'm sure I'm, there's probably a lot of questions. Um, we are very accessible. Um, please feel free to email us at admissions at cooper.edu. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cooper Union. As we move into the second half of our presentation, just a reminder to our attendees, please feel free to use that Q&A button to ask any questions you may have. But up next is Binghamton University. Hey everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is Douglas Harrington. I am one of the admissions counselors here for Binghamton University, part of the State University of New York system. If you give me one second here, I will go ahead and start sharing my screen for my presentation. Um, make sure everything is up to speed here and we'll get going. All right, as I mentioned, we are part of the State University of New York system or the SUNY system, if you've heard of it, we are one of 64 different schools, a part of the SUNY system. And out of all 64, we are gladly ranked number one in the entire system. So certainly have to start off with this first slide here, showcasing our beautiful campus that sits here in upstate New York. Um, it's about a thousand acres and it is a true campus atmosphere. It's not like you're walking around a city and all of a sudden you're on a college campus. You go through a big main entrance here and you are truly on a true campus atmosphere, which I certainly love to highlight. Of course, love to highlight our location. As I mentioned, we are in upstate New York. You can see that we're super centralized to a lot of metro areas in, New in the Northeast. New York's three hours, Philly's three hours, Boston, Cleveland, Pittsburgh around five. And you have smaller cities like Syracuse, Scranton, Ithaca, they're only around an hour away, which really certainly helps with not only things to do on the weekends, but also when it comes time for recruiting and full-time jobs and internships. We do have about 145,000 active living alum, two thirds of which actually live and work in the New York City and Philadelphia metro areas. So since we're so close to those areas, they certainly love to come back and help out our students as much as possible, whether it be doing events, giving advice, commencement speeches, and of course, recruiting for their companies. We do have over 1,800 companies that do come and recruit to Binghamton on an annual basis. Certainly love to just give our cost, our, our breakdown um, in terms of how many students that we have. We have about 14,000 students. We're a nice mid-sized institution. We're not a 50,000 student school, but we're also not a super small liberal arts college either. So we're a nice mid-sized institution with lots of academic offerings. You can see, certainly love to point out our first year retention rate. You can see it's about a 92%. It's actually one of the highest rates in the entire country. So students who come here certainly love it, but they want to stay and they want to continue their education. And of course, you can see our 50% mid-ranges as well for in terms of GPA. Um, you can see 93 to 98. 
and of course your SAT and ACT scores. We are test optional um, through the spring of 2022, and we are waiting for SUNY's approval to continue that uh, venture as well into the future. Um, so we're very, very excited for this past year of being test optional as well. We are self-reported test scores, so you don't need to send them officially through the ACT or the SAT. And of course, we do super score your scores as well. So we do have over 140 different majors and programs uh, broken up into six different schools of study. We do have an amazing our arts and sciences college which is our largest has about 120 of our 140 different majors and programs and about 80 percent of our student body all of our physical sciences social sciences maths languages fine arts all that fun stuff is certainly housed there college of community and public affairs which houses our brand new bachelor's of social work major and our human development major our decker college of nursing we are a fantastic direct entry nursing program one of the top in new york state our School of Management, one of the top 10 public business schools in the country. Is, and in terms of our accounting, we are actually the number one feeder into the big four accounting firms in New York City. We have our Watson College of Engineering and Applied Sciences with four, five different engineering uh, majors and computer science. If you didn't know, IBM was actually founded in the Binghamton area, and that's who the school is named after, the founder of IBM. And our brand new School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, which is also a direct entry program. If you do apply pre-pharmacy here at Binghamton, uh, certainly uh, a direct entry program that you can continue on to your PharmD. And of course, if you look on the right hand side, certainly would be remiss without mentioning Binghamton's first Nobel Prize winning professor, that's Stanley Whittingham. He won Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2019, and he does work, work with our first year students. He is credited with inventing the lithium ion battery, and without him, all of this virtual stuff that we're able to do wouldn't be able to happen. And of course, he does work with them in our, a couple of our fantastic first year research programs, whether it be FRI or the first year research immersion program or the source project. Very similar. Uh, you get to start doing research right from your first semester on our campus. Being a research institution, we've had several students come into this, these programs with zero experience in research that have ended up actually being published by the end of their first year. We are an R1 research institution, and we certainly love to talk about the Binghamton impact and how we can impact your career, whether it be your research or your in, uh, internships and full-time jobs. You do have access to our Fleischmann Center for Career and Professional Development. They are there for all of your internship and post-graduation needs. As I mentioned, we do have over 1,800 companies that do come and recruit to Binghamton on an annual basis. We're amazing service learning opportunities within both inside and outside of the classroom, uh, whether it be through an extracurricular activity that you have or through, like I said, through the classroom, lots of amazing opportunities. And of course, our study abroad. Since we're part of the SUNY system, you're not only getting access to our study abroad programs, you're getting access to every single one in the SUNY system. So that is over a thousand different programs available to you. So we certainly love to point that out as well. But of course, you don't just want to be confined to the classroom, right? You don't want to be the person who spends 24 seven in the library. I know them, they're no fun. You can go out and explore. We do have over 450 student run groups and organizations ranging from performance to professional to volunteer to almost anything that you can think of. We are division one, we do have 21 division one sports and we do have club and intramural sports as well if you want to participate, but maybe not at the division one level. And of course, outside of that, we do have a bunch of different music and theater performances. We do have two professional museums uh, of for art, as well as different fitness centers as well. And of course, certainly want to point out our value, especially for out of state, you can see total cost of attendance is around $44,000. That is, of course, before any aid and scholarships, we do reserve all of our merit scholarships for out of state students. So I certainly love to point that out. So that is the quote unquote sticker price, but we've actually been ranked as high as number 15 in terms of best value schools in the entire country. So we'd certainly love for you to check out everything uh, here that Binghamton has to offer, live chats, one-on-one -on -one appointments, and you can see our nature preserve in the background. We do have a full virtual tour that we have online as well. So. With that, please feel free to ha uh, answer any questions um, in the, uh, the Q&A. I'll be more than happy to answer anything. And that wraps up my little section here as my timer was just about to go off. I had one second left. Um, so I'll be passing it over to, I believe Temple is next. That is correct. Thank you, Binghamton. Uh, up next is Temple. All right, let me share my screen. I downloaded it to a PowerPoint just so I wouldn't have any <laughs> technical difficulties because I got nervous about it. Um, all right, let me start my timer. Hello, everyone. My name is Katie Karuba. I am a, uh, an admissions counselor in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at Temple University. A um, couple of fun facts about me. Uh, one, I am an alum of Temple. And two, I actually live in Wisconsin. I moved here um, after living my entire life in Philadelphia and the uh, surrounding area about a year ago, I moved to Wisconsin. So I'm very excited to be uh, working with our Midwest students. 
Um, but let's get started. So Temple University was founded in 1884 by a man named uh, Dr. Russell Conwell. He was a Baptist minister and congregants of his or members of his church approached him and said, hey, we want to take classes. We're working all day. Can we take classes in the evening? Will you teach us? And he said, sure. So he met those students later in the week. He taught them whatever they wanted to learn. And really, this started the foundation of Temple providing accessible and affordable education and bringing it to the Temple of today, I like to say, um, a world class education. So I describe Temple University, our main flagship campus, as a large publicly funded research institution right in the heart of Philadelphia. So when I say large, I'm about to say a lot of big numbers. Um, so we have 27,000 undergraduate students. We have over 17 different schools and colleges. 12 of them are at the undergraduate level. So five of them are professional schools. So those would be things like med, medical school, physical therapy, podiatry, dentistry, pharmacy, <laughs> and the other school 12 are um, at the undergraduate level, totaling over 150 different majors. I can't list them all, um, but there's a lot of diversity in uh, the academics that we provide. Similarly, if you don't know what you want to study, that's totally fine too. Um, we like to say, at least our university studies office that has our undeclared uh, students like to say that that's one of the most popular majors. Uh, many students throughout some of their time uh, end up switching majors anyway. So you can come in undeclared um, and you can take courses throughout different disciplines and we can help you find your passion. Said a lot of big numbers, but we do recognize that students learn best in a smaller classroom environment. Uh, we do strive to create a campus atmosphere uh, that is a smaller college within a larger college. And one of the ways we do that is by keeping our student to faculty ratio at 13 to one. So large publicly funding, we do, we do receive public funding from the state of Pennsylvania, a research institution. Uh, we like to do research. We are an R1 Carnegie classification, a research institution. Basically what that means is, like I just said, we do a lot of research. Um, our faculty does research, our graduate students do research, but also our undergraduate students do research and we um, encourage them to do so. One program we have is our Diamond Research Scholars. Through that program is you, you, you apply to it anytime throughout your undergraduate program, you can apply to it and you uh, submit a proposal. If accepted, you get fully funded, you get a faculty advisor, you do your research, and then you can present those findings at a national conference. That's really great because one, you're getting experience in your field, but two, um, you're able to network within your field as well. Um, lastly, we're right in the heart of Philadelphia. So uh, we, da -da -da. We are in the sixth largest city in the, the United States. So our campus is beautiful. We're about six by four city blocks. For a city school, I would say our campus is very green. There's gardens all over campus and they're always working to provide more green space for our students. Uh, we have state-of-the-art facilities. However, we want our students to go out and experience um, all that Philadelphia has to offer, whether that be you know socially, you're going to maybe museums or outdoor concerts or outdoor movies, maybe yoga on the pier, um, but also going out and interning and maybe working with one of the Fortune 500 co companies in Philadelphia, down, all the or to um, you know one of our smaller nonprofits or community-based organizations. We want you to experience everything that Philadelphia has to offer, but then use our campus as your um, wonderful home base. We have over 350 different clubs and organizations. I highly encourage you to get involved on campus um, to take advantage of those clubs and organizations to you know make friends, but also to pad your resume. If you become you know a leadership role in one of those organizations, you can put that on your resume. Um, lastly, we do have 18 different Division One athletic teams. Uh, two of the biggest sports are football and basketball. Football, we play at the Lincoln Financial Field. It's where the Eagles play. Um, it's in South Philadelphia. So more specifically, Temple University is in North Philadelphia. The link is in South Philly. So, and there's a road that runs north to south called Broad Street. So you can just hop on the Broad Street line. That's a, a subway and go right down to the um, link. And then uh, lastly, basketball is played on campus at the Leah Chorus Center. Here are all of our different campuses, but I wanna point out our two international campuses, Temple Rome and Temple Tokyo, actual Temple University campuses taught by Temple professors. Um, your scholarships, aid, everything is exactly the same. Um, you can do six weeks, a semester or a full year abroad, but we also have study abroad programs all over the world. Um, we did actually do study abroad this semester, uh, spring 2021. We were able to put together a small cohort of students. It was about 100 across both campuses, and um, they were able to have a successful study abroad uh, 
so far in this semester and continuing to be successful. Um, quickly, I have about 30 seconds. Let me go through the application process. We're Common App only, so you can only apply using the Common App. Once you submit your application, you're gonna get an email to join something called TU Portal. So in the questions I actually saw, how will you know that you um, we've received all part of your application? Check, most schools have a portal. Check that portal to see what we've received. Once you've sent in your Common App, you can go on that portal and fill out your self-reported high school transcript. Test scores are optional. We've been test optional for quite a while. So if you are not academically successful in the classroom, uh, or if you are good in the classroom, you can apply test optional. And I will stop there, um, but thank you so much for being so attentive and hand it off to University of Pittsburgh. Great, thank you very much, Temple. Stop um, sharing. <laughs> and yes, <Yeah. laughs> our final presenter this evening will be University of Pittsburgh. All right, well, hi everyone. Good evening, my name is Betsy Stevens and I'm an admission counselor at the University of Pittsburgh, better known as Pitt. I'm based in the Chicagoland area, so I work exclusively um, with Illinois students, born and raised here. So love working with students um, who come from the area that I grew up in. So tonight I'm gonna give you a little overview about campus and our location, talk a little bit about academics, um, student life, and then the application process and next steps. Um, so on the screen right now, You'll see a snapshot of our campus. We are a mid to large size school with about uh, 19,000 undergraduate students, a total of about 28,000 students. Um, we're located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So we're about an eight to nine hour drive from most of the Chicagoland area or a one hour flight out of O'Hare or Midway. Um, we're, we're urban ish, I like to say. So we're about three miles outside of the heart of the city, but definitely within city limits. Um, we just, we do have a, a sort of a, a campus vibe, but not too much green space. So definitely busy, but not as busy as the heart of a downtown area. So we definitely give you um, the best of both worlds. When you step foot on campus, you'll definitely get this big school vibe, even though we only have about 19,000 students. So lots of school spirit, um, and our students are really involved on campus and in the community. Campus itself is 100% walkable, so you don't need um, to use public transportation to get around our campus. Mostly everything that you'd be going to, like your residence hall, um, the dining facilities, uh, libraries, things like that, probably about a five to seven minute walk. Um, so moving on, the proximity to the city is definitely one of the highlights for our students. While we want students to engage on campus, we definitely want them to explore everything that the city has to offer. Um, we're home to about um, to many Fortune 500 companies and several startups as well. So as, as far as internships go, a lot of opportunities in the downtown area and some of the other neighborhoods for our students. If you're interested in the fine arts, we do have the cultural district where there'll be a lot of concerts, um, the symphony orchestra, the ballet, things along those lines. And our students can access most of those events for free or at a reduced rate. Pittsburghers love their professional sports teams. We're home to four of them and all of those teams, except the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, they'll offer uh, reduced ticket prices to our students. Um, but have no fear, our students can go to Heinz Field um, to watch our football team play there because we do share that stadium with the NFL team. One of my favorite things about Pittsburgh is definitely the food. They can't beat Chicago pizza, um, but they have a variety of different cuisine for our students to try, try, um, to try. Um, so definitely a highlight if you're looking to get something um, that's not on campus. Uh, lastly, the best thing about all of this is that our students can access everything um, using public transportation and that is included in your tuition and fees. So the downtown area is about a 10 to 15 minute bus ride um, and the airport students can ride the bus there and that's about a 45 minute bus ride. As far as academics go, I'll keep this brief. We have over 100 majors, minors, and certificate programs for our students to choose from. As a freshman, you do apply directly to a first year entry school. You can see them on the screen right here. These are all direct entry programs. Every school except the School of Nursing, you are undecided your freshman year. You'll take that first year or two to explore before declaring your major. We also have um, direct entry into several professional programs um, like our farm, our farm D program. There are several opportunities um, within academics to elevate your experience on campus. So we do have a Pitt Honors program. Um, the perks of this program would include smaller, more engaging classes, um, honors housing, and the opportunity to work with an honors mentor. 
All of our students are guaranteed at least, at least one internship before they graduate. So career services is very helpful with that. And several students will have multiple internships before they graduate, um, whether that be in Pittsburgh and their hometown or something international. Like many of the other schools said prior to me, um, we are a research one institution, so that's very important. There's a lot of funding for our students to do that. And our first year students can begin doing that their second semester. Um, we are teaching, we do have several teaching hospitals on campus. We are home to six hospitals, five of which are affiliated with the university through the UPMC system. So very well known in the health sciences. And if you're looking to get um, you know, research experiences, clinical opportunities, volunteer, we're a great place to do that. Lastly, we do offer over 350 study abroad programs and about 19% of our undergrads will study abroad. Um, so a robust, robust programs for our students to choose from. It's definitely my number one regret um, from my college experience. So I really encourage you to get that global perspective. 80% of your college experience is spent outside of the classroom. So while academics are really important, um, we do want you to take advantage of everything that we have to offer outside the classroom. So I did touch on Pitt Arts, which is um, an opportunity to be more engaged in the cultural district in the city. We are division one school for athletics in the ACC or Atlantic Coast Conference. Our students really rally behind um, several of our teams on campus, including um, men's basketball and the football team. We have over 400 student organizations to get involved in and about 12% of our students are involved in Greek life. Lastly, as far as residence life goes, we don't require students to live on campus at any point, but about 98% of our first year students do and we do guarantee three years of on campus housing. Um, I'll skip ahead the um, application process. Um, we will be test optional for the next two years. Um, you can see everything on the screen here. And lastly, uh, my contact information is here. So at this time, we're, we're not offering visits to um, rising seniors, but if you're an admitted senior, um, we will be sending an invitation soon. Thanks so much for joining tonight. Great, thank you very much, University of Pittsburgh. And thank you to all of our presenters. Uh, we do have a few minutes remaining. So while we wait to see if any last questions come in from any of our attendees, perhaps we can do a really quick round here ourselves. Um, and my question to you all would be, um, what's one thing that you did not have time to include in your presentation? Maybe that's your favorite event or tradition, a fun fact about your campus or something else. And we'll go in the same order, starting with Champlain. Yeah, so I definitely think one of the favorite things I love to mention is Burlington itself. We are right in the historic Hill District. And with that being said, we have actually restored Victorian mansions into our residence halls. So all of our first year students live in one of, the, one of these 20 re residential halls um, and they have no cookie cutter rooms. They ha might have a fireplace, they may have a large walk-in closet um, and definitely adds to the environment of campus. And then also thinking about housing just in general, it is not required to live on campus, but typically about 80 to 85% of our students do choose to do so. Great, thank you. Maine Maritime. Um, I would say the one thing I didn't mention was that uh, all of our students have been on campus this whole time due to the hands-on nature of our classes. We just can't teach you how to, you know, throw lines, drive a tugboat, things like that online very well, weld. <laughs> Um, and we are certainly open for visits, so feel free to get in touch with us, admissions at mma.edu, and we would love to show you our campus, especially in the summertime, get you down to our waterfront. Great, thank you. Uh, Cooper Union? Oh boy, there's so many things I'd love to talk about, but um, one of the things I, I, never, I didn't get to touch on was this incredible legacy of our great hall. Um, which since the school's founding has always been a public uh, forum for discourse. So we've had several sitting presidents, Abraham Lincoln, Barack Obama, um, come and speak in the Great Hall. We've also had the NAACP had their first meeting in our Great Hall. The women's suffragettes organized some of their first meetings in the Great Hall. Susan B. Anthony had her office downstairs. So we've had, you know, all these incredible, you know, very forward thinking, um, individuals and we still have that forum happening um, which kind of becomes like an extra bonus to our program is students will find out about an interesting lecture or a poet or 
um, musician who's come to do a talk in the in the great hall and you get to participate in those opportunities which i feel like is almost supplemental to your uh, education great thank you uh binghamton yeah, no, one of my certainly one of my favorite parts of campus is certainly the layout of campus. Um, if you actually look at an overhead map of campus, um, there's the road that goes around in a circle. And if you look at an overhead map, it's actually in the shape of a brain. Um, so it's really uh, convenient for students because all of your academic buildings are on the inside of the brain and all your residential communities and buildings are on the outside of the brain. So we do try to separate that living and learning as much as we possibly can. Um, once you're on your inside, you know, you're taking your classes, you're academically focused um, and making sure that, you know, you, you've got everything under control while you cross over that road and all of a sudden you're home and you can take a breather and a break. And we certainly like to um, advertise, you know, the separation of that living and learning atmosphere here. Great, thank you. Temple? Hi, um, I would just recommend uh, visiting us both virtually or in person. We did start in-person tours last month. Um, and virtually we have um, information sessions twice a day, daily throughout the week, one Saturday a month. Um, if any of you are thinking about transferring later, we have transfer information sessions, um, a virtual tour. But um, if you go to, I put the link in there, admissions.temple.edu backslash visits, um, check us out. Great, thank you. And Pitt. I'll keep it short and sweet since we're running short on time here. Um, if you're on campus, definitely check out the Cathedral of Learning. It's a beautiful, charming building. If you're a Harry Potter fan, um, it looks like Hogwarts on the inside. So definitely a, a must see. Great, thank you. Um, thank you again to all of our presenters. Before we do end this session, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, when you close this window, you will receive a very quick four question survey. We ask that you take a minute and complete that. Again, there are two other blocks of sessions this evening, so please feel free to sign up for those. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that registration website. But again, uh, thank you to everybody who joined us and good luck in your college search. Have a great night. <laughs>